are you as exacting with other things? I, I generally am. <laughs> In the areas I'm not exact, obviously I wouldn't tell you in, the, <laughs> in front of the camera, but in general. <laughs> um, Are you like, do you have like OCD, for example? That's what uh, one of my friends at uh, one of the TV stations said. She's very particular about, you know, Aisha and Sanga. She was like, you, you must have this OCD. I said, look at you, a girl who's mad about sports. Uh, you know, look who's talking. It's not OCD. And I don't know why, why what's normal should be normal is presented as a condition, as almost a psychiatric or medical condition, mm. should we be exact. So to those who say, yeah, but all this fuss around, that's, that's almost like, what's that obsession? I say, but obsession, it is the norm. Visit your favorite uh, Apple.com, Samsung.com, Amazon.com and all this. Look at well, all the world beaters. Well, there's a difference. I mean, there's a difference between having things done the way they should be done and then feeling your life um, being imbalanced because things are not a certain way. I think that's the difference. There's some people with OCD, because mm. you talked about life is constantly changing, mm. we're constantly learning new things, but if someone cannot focus because a pen is slightly to an angle, then that becomes that's a bit OCD. of a problem. I, I wouldn't, uh, now, uh, I would not go ballistic if a friend came three minutes, let's say, late, on a casual appointment of a tea. I would know the difference between this being a weekend, that was supposed to be a conversation. It wasn't supposed to be like, you know, a flight or anything. Mm -hmm. If I, your chairs at home, one yes, is pushed that's, out yes, of Yes, that's alignment. not, I'm not, yes, I wouldn't, it's not, you know, the, the, this, everything must be this way and such there. I believe in general tidiness, I guess, general standards, but not, not basically, making the fussiness the point. Basically, I believe the Sabbath was made for man, as Jesus said, not man for the Sabbath. So I am reasonable about things. I will not cry, die, you know, go into convulsions just because of little, you know, so I, I don't have all But I just feel this is what we're taught in primary school. People mm -hmm. have repeated P6 over grammatical errors that now are being made by university graduates. So that's why, as I said earlier, just it, it takes the, sa the same time to just write this post. Just the little things, apostrophes, full stops, exclamation marks. Just get into the habit of quality. You, always, you won't always be in this Ugandan environment of laxity. One day you might want a job in the UN or international organizations. You might have heard recently when this uh, tech uh, coding hub, Andela, laid off 400 uh, yeah. African uh, coders. So that's the point I've been uh, making on Twitter. You know, Africans think that everywhere is luxury and all this. And, you know, just because I work for place ABC, we don't have those high standards. So when you get to a platform like Andela that's funded by Facebook and they need coding for international clients, yes, they want to support you in a sense, but still in coding, it's a world of exactness. Yes. Then you discover 400 of our best or what you thought were our best really were just like below par. So it's just a lesson. And as you said That's earlier, lesson, yeah. just look at all those. Go to the pages of Apple. Go to the website of Apple. Go to the Mercedes or BMW website. Go to Chanel's website. The handbag, the perfume, the sandals <laughs> that they produce are the same as the design of the website. When you get to Chanel, you have no doubts that this is Chanel. Get the upper website from the grammar to the punctuation to the photo quality to the expression to the choice of phrase and everything mm. to the graphics to everything. The website looks like the iPhone Max. I think it has World to be class. like a personal mission. Eh? It's a personal, and why not? As I say, and just look at them. And um, but even in Uganda, anyway. <laughs> yes, but even in Uganda, um, we began. First of all, we, we got used to this lax Uganda. And then there came a number of restaurants, hotels, and others that began taking it the extra step, the decor, the everything, the menu, the story behind the social media. And so what's happening now? They're attracting people. Mm. People want an experience. I've argued this on Facebook. In spite of ourselves, we know what quality is, and we want the best for ourselves. Mm. And people will pay $10, $5, $8 for breakfast, at these restaurants, these hotels, these cafes, because they know what quality is. There are millions of videos for viewing on uh, the YouTubes and all this. I was fascinated when Netflix emerged. 
when everything was supposed to be free, people showed a willingness to subscribe and pay, actually pay monthly subscription to watch these videos. And then things like Spotify, when there's music everywhere, why do people pay Spotify? Mm -hmm. So once again, even on YouTube, there are those influencers, there are those channels that aim at a higher quality. At first, the public doesn't take notice, but the people who matter the most, sponsors, brands and such things, start noticing. So yes, the good news is, aim for the best, the money always for the sponsorship. Those who matter always notice the best from the average. Mm. So your first job? My first job was, um, I worked for the Lutheran Royal Federation, uh, okay. this uh, German, uh, no, no it's a, I think it's a Swiss. It's, um, it's basically a European NGO. Um, it was 1992 to 1993. Mm. Then, That's one year. Yes, then about the time I began writing for the, uh, I began I think 1992 writing for the, the New Vision. And as a freelancer, first, you know, let's just do the editor, then eventually as a freelancer. Then 1994, in come the first FM radio stations, Sanyo FM, or Radio Sanyo at that time, a capital FM. So, um, well, the first job for which the public, I guess, knows me was the newsreader on Capital FM. Mm -hmm. William Pike, the, one of the directors of Capital, had been on leave and he used to read the news at Capital. People don't know the first newsreader read at Capital was William Pike. But then his leave had to end and he had to go back to the New Vision, where, of course, he was the MD. So, desperately looking for a newsreader, he speaks to one of his editors, David Sepoya, who says, hey, there's this chap here who could do some news. So, Pike, in desperation, just says, fine, let him just come and try. So, that's how I joined Capital. And that's how I joined radio, January mm -hmm. 1994. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that, of course, that... How long, though? For a year. Um, and then after which I joined Sanyo. Mm -hmm. But that was, yes, that historic year in Uganda with the famous names, the DJ Berry, the Peter Samatimas, the Boba Chavez, the Alex Ndaulas, the Christine Mawadris, Gloria mm -hmm. Cummins, and all of this. Yes. And how long were you at Sanyo? A um, few months. Um, okay. Yes. And then after that? After that, I went into a whole, now I went back into the, the writing full time, the new vision. Mm -hmm. And then after about a year, I more or less went for like about a decade now, five, six years into the monitor. Okay, yeah. okay. So it seemed like you were still finding your fit, was mm. it? I don't, know about, like one year here, I don't know about one year finding there, my three feet, but I don't know if, if it was finding my feet or if I must confess to the other side of me. I think this overly opinionated side to me was my undoing. Let me just be <laughs> diplomatic about it. Really? That when you look back? A mixture of overly opinionated and that fussiness you talk about. Why can't we do A, B, C, D? Why can't we do it? Why must we have this A, B, C? And there you are, and not understanding the politics of the workplace, and you're telling your bosses, but we must do this and mm. the other. Okay. That got me into what's so Has that come back to bite you many times? It's, it's, it's bitten me. Um, I guess deservedly so in some way, if we, if we agree that there's a, such a thing as the politics of the workplace and even when the boss is wrong, you've got to, you know, go through the motions. Sometimes you've got to allow the boss to, to look good, Let, let's put it that way. Yeah. Constantly question the basics, even if he or she is wrong. It's not always good office politics, so that's what got me in trouble. If I can gloss over <laughs> the, the one year, six months, and four months things. Okay. Although now it's the in thing. It's the in thing to question people, even in the social media era. It's now no longer enough just to produce some kind of ban. Everybody wants to know what, what did you use animal far for this and everything. So outspokenness is now the in thing. Mm -hmm. People demanding to see if this coffee or this uh, chocolate was produced in, you know, in, was it produced in a slave uh, farm in Ivory Coast? Was that handbag produced in some dingy factory in China and whatnot? So I guess now it's virtual mainstream, and especially of course now because social media where everybody's mm. outspoken, everybody's yeah, everyone an opinion, has an opinion. opinion. Mm -hmm. Now I'm more or less just mainstream, but that's what happened. Okay, all right. Now you mentioned earlier that when you look at social media, Yes, there's the, the trolling side and the negative comments, but you think the benefits far outweigh. Um, a lot of people consider that you are very critical of anything Ugandan. It, maybe that's what it comes across because you that's speak what your it, mind. That's what it is, yes. Are you actually? I very much am, unapologetically so. 
I can say it again, even on camera. Uh, what, what are you proud of as a Ugandan? Proud of the because weather. Because you are Ugandan. So. Yes, I'm, 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 I like and I'm proud of natural Uganda. The, the geography, the food, the landscape, the weather, the places. But those are things we don't really have I, I, much I, I about. I agree, I agree. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I must say something positive about Uganda. <laughs> So natural, scenic, geographical, historic site, landscape, uh, cuisine, Uganda, that I'm proud of. What the about Uganda, the people? Yes, that's, that's <laughs> what I'm coming to. The Uganda I'm not proud of, and I really just can't pretend about this, is the people Uganda. Why am I not proud of people Uganda? I don't know, maybe I'm one of those people who, who kind of saw the last years of European settlement in Uganda or running of the civil service that the, 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 the immediate years were children when the Asians were expelled in 1972 the British teachers we had began going and this Uganda the Uganda that cuts corners the dishonest Uganda where systems break down uh, began taking shape but then I can't buy into the current Uganda People, you think you love Uganda, you think you love these places, you did not see the earlier Uganda. You did not see Uganda when Entebbe, Jinja, were just towns, when all the streets were laid down, when every house was uh, marked. Of course, as a child of civil servants who live in civil servants' quarters, but forget the Kampala you see, this Kampala here. Even in 1975, when the OAU summit took place, the President Amin took the, the visiting presidents round the true Benchwanka Street upward toward uh, the Equatorial and Watoto Church so they could see uh, Uganda. Kampala wasn't like this. So I've seen a different Uganda. To some degree, bits of it are coming back to the lit streets, but we are a very long way from what Uganda was. Then, as I said earlier, um, it was basic. If you, if, you, if you ever see a copy, an old copy of the 1970s, 1980s newspapers, you'd have to go for like about seven months before like coming on, onto one grammatical spelling error. Today, you have to go for like about maybe seven months not to find a <laughs> grammatical error. Basic English, everything the other way around. Mm. The sense of decency, the sense of um, modesty that we once had, that has gone. In, you, you might have read in, in the various newspaper series in the country, when the, the Tito Kelo government a, a coup took place in 1985 and Western Uganda was cut off from the rest of Uganda. So when Western Uganda was cut off, Mbarara Masaka and onward, these civil servants continued working as, on, as normal. They just continued reporting to work, and that's when these NRA rebels were now in power. Came to the stories you might have heard came to the UCB, Uganda Commercial Bank, Bank of Uganda took some money, and you know us and said they would pay it, repay it when they take power, and you know signed all these ledger books and whatnot. In other words, to think that there was a coup in Kampala in July 1985, and the NRA rebels of the URM 70 cut of Western Uganda, and people did not go on a looting spree in Western Uganda. Mm. and just reported they yet essentially there, were, there was now like two governments in one that side of Uganda these corruption cases this constant day in day out headlines not just in the private media which you might say is anti-government but even the mainstream government media this wasn't Uganda this idea of people when they uh, when they come down with illness must be flown abroad read Ugandan history when mm. President Milton Obote um, had an attempt on his life in 1969. Where was he taken? Mulago Hospital. Yeah, we had some of the best Mulago Hospital. Then. When this Israeli hostage, the elderly lady Dora Block, had this food like, you know, choke her throat, they took her from the airport to Great A Hospital in Entebbe, then to Mulago. It wasn't to Nairobi or anything. Well, Today, the history even of Insambia Hospital. Exactly. And how ex excellent it was at exactly. the time. But some people might say that was then and this is now. What, so what, what do you mean that was then? As in the standards that you're looking at were then. So then that, so that's my point. So that comes down to the question of why I'm critical of present day Uganda. Not mm -hmm. that I hate my, my country, not that I'm full of self-hate, but I've seen better, I wish better, and I don't agree that life is supposed to be dirt all over the streets. I don't believe that we as a 
seem to be on the trend toward the low brow. We seem to celebrate it. We seem to celebrate bad English. In the beginning, it was almost like a joke, but now it's become like our way. we as, uh, seem to be on the trend toward the low brow we seem to celebrate it we seem to celebrate bad english in the beginning it was almost like a joke but now it's become like our way it's almost like anybody uh, who uglish? speaks well <laughs> yes uglish anybody who speaks well people who have a high standard people who are particular about things are kind of resented by society there was a time when uh, these myriad bodies were first laid in the 1960s Miriam Bote in the 1960s was a model first lady, you know, Gaya's educated poise and all that, the Princess Bagaya. So it was that time when dignity, style, you know, when the Gaya's high schools mentored the Ugandan uh, population, when half the cabinet of uh, Milton and Bote in the 1960s was King's College Board of People, when, when people just liked to present themselves as, you know, gentlemen, as ladies, as refined and all that. Mm. That's a Uganda I, I still stand by. So I don't agree that this pigeon Uganda, this, as you say, the Uglish, this low life, you know, dishonest Uganda is the Uganda we're destined for. I just disagree. Okay. That's the Uganda I okay. don't But uh, it's, um, agree with. it seems even sometimes when something good seems to come out of Uganda, and people are like, you know, happy about it. You always seem to have, again, an opinion on the other side. Yes. For example, um, recently we have the East Africa's Got Talent winners, uh, Esther and Ezekiel. And I think you posted that they basically were just doing karaoke. No, no, I just asked the question. No, I genuinely, sometimes, well, because people like us have this very intense following on social media, every okay. little comment, every little thing is like read in, uh, in between lines of. People sometimes forget I'm just a human being who also... So you like were just else. questioning? Yeah, because I, I'm familiar with uh, things like the Cox Studio Africa contest and the other talent yeah, and contest. And the Voice, America's yes. Got Talent, yes. all these so, shows. So, no, I, I, got, I was familiar with, the, especially the Coca-Cola ones, the, the ones that featured our, what you call the professional musicians, the Shebas and the others, the Baby mm -hmm. Pools and whatnot. So that's the last I watched them, not consistently, but that's what I saw. So when I saw this stuff with Got Talent, I didn't watch it in detail. So when I see these people win, my mind was thinking, if it's stuff, I thought... Where the professionals, you know, I, was like, I confused this so way. So you said it was like Cox Studio Africa where they were actually with doing the variety, yes. And new songs I didn't and realize that this was, it was basic, as you say, America's got color. And I was only later that I realized, ah, I hadn't been following this. This was really what you'd call an amateur show. It was a singing <laughs> contest. So, yes, I'm free to mime, you know, a Michael Jackson song or anything. That then I understood. Yeah. But because it's me and my record of uh, skepticism about Uganda, people thought I was once again, you know, trolling them. Yeah. Yes, and just people, I just interested. No, I didn't follow this. Tell me. Because people do feel I've seen the opinion being yes. passed around that you don't, you're not proud of anything you've well, 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 no, which no, is hard no, to no, believe. Well, well, okay, let me just, uh, okay, let me let me say what I'm proud of about now people Uganda. Yes. I am proud of the fact that in this very difficult um, international athletics circuit dominated by Ethiopians and Kenyans, Ugandans have recently since. Well, you can go back to Davis Kamoga, bronze medal 1996 Atlanta, after that drought of uh, without medals, and then starting from uh, I guess the 2004 Commonwealth Games, the the Dorcas and Zikuru, the Moses Kip series, Uganda has actually emerged as the third force in long distance running at the world level. Mm -hmm. That is something. I mean when uh, Stephen Kipotich wins a gold medal in London at the marathon, most of us basically, if you look at even the mainstream media, they had essentially given up for an Ethiopian or Kenyan. The question is, will Uganda be seventh or eighth? There was barely any coverage. M most people have watched given up until the last minute to see Kipotich win this. That I'm very proud of. Athletics mm -hmm. is my favorite sport over athletics, oh. gymnastics, and uh, figure skating. Those are my three favorite sports. So I really do. I love figure skating and gymnastics. Yes. So, <laughs> well, so those are my favorite sports. Mm -hmm. I'm proud of that. And this I can't say. And forget proud of Ugandan. Really, even if I wasn't a Ugandan, just. Uganda as the third force behind but Ethiopia and Kenya. But we netballers doing well. We, yes, we do that, have yes, yes. These, and these are, these are world level competition. These are not, this, this is not just Eastern Central Africa, volley, basketball or volleyball, even basketball. Many of these sports, especially the school sports, volleyball, rugby, 
um, I think basketball and such had died down during the 1980s and 70s. There was a revival start in the late 1980s, early 90s. And now, I think recently we qualified for is it the Africa Basketball Championship or something. Yeah. So in the area of sports, I genuinely am proud of Uganda. And proud, not because I must say so, but really objectively. I mean, world champions, 10,000 meters is championship. The 800 meters, the significance to me of the of our win in the, the, the women's 800 meters is even almost more than the 10,000 meters. The middle distance races, the 400 to 800 and 1,500, are so competitive. For us to get a gold medal at the world championship, this mm -hmm. is just no other way of looking at it. That really is bona fide greatness. That I'm proud of. But what about entertainment? The other side of it is I wrote once, I think on Facebook in 2005, when, it's, when you know, I was complaining about how the government has neglected the youth, neglected the society and all this. And I said, it's kind of interesting and it's kind of impressive that the Uganda music industry mm. over the last 19, 20 years, since about 2001, maybe 1999, has, without government support, without protection of copyright, without anything, single-handedly emerged on its own, mm. become a national force displaced the Congolese music that was dominated radio and you know, nightclubs and parties in the 1990s and become a standalone force, all without government help. If there's anything you can give credit to our society for, it's that, the music industry. Video upon video, I mean, you can watch for 24 hours, yeah. Ugandan video after video, and only maybe after about the 20th hour do you run out of videos. I mean, that really is something. In the past, you could never go for a function or party and they'll pay, play only Ugandan music, but that's yes. possible now. It's because possible now. Their volume of Ugandan music, the, the quality of the videos, the, even the perception that they must be that upfront. The Ugandan music industry for me is kind of like a barometer for wh what's possible and where Uganda is going. Because it is so difficult, obviously now since we no longer buy CDs, LPs, cassette tapes and then because of our internet penetration and uh, the cost, streaming isn't it an option, so they must perform live. Live performance and of course corporate endorsement is the main source of revenue. Mm. So they must work that much harder and they're constantly touring and all this. In this little society, even just to find locations for videos and whatnot, it's really credit to them. And I've written about these things, but because of the critical side of me about Uganda, the positives are usually forgotten. Um, that's now entertainment. Mm. Um, what about film? In terms of point? film, in terms of TV? That's the, TV I'm critical of because of the obvious thing. I mean, watch tonight's Those TV standards. news, mm. the blunders, the grammar and all this the mistakes we make and whatnot, you know, the, the video production, you know, critical of that. That I'm not satisfied with. Um, radio, same thing. It's, we, we're, we're not going further than we, we should be by now. Um, I mean, kind of impressed tentatively by the interest, at least in the major, the three or four major towns in comedy and comedy as an outing, comedy as an, uh, an established art form today. Um, and a platform for people to actually express themselves. Mm, yes, mm. of course, the fact that you can, of course, make fun of anything. But that, of course, has always been, for the last 20, 25 years, just the, the ability, the, the open political space. You can criticize the government. The government's getting quite touchy lately, mm. over the last three, four years. But most of the 1990s and the last, maybe, most of the, the, the 2000s, it's been an open field. But journalists don't get arrested or criticized or, you know, media houses close for criticizing the government. But it's now getting prickly, but that's been our record. And now that as a people away from the trades and the industries, now just as a people, you might take this cliche of Ugandans are friendly people for granted until you go to difficult places like the Horn of Africa or parts of Central Africa where you're a foreigner and then must leave the country or let's say travel by bus, cross the border. And there's this place where you run into these immigration officers and the sense of high handedness. You can spend a night in jail. You're just not sure about your safety. Being... And they make it clear you're not welcome. Yes, welcome and very particular. And 
I've, I've faced that, I won't mention countries in Horn of Africa, but where, let's say, there's a situation ABC, you know, like one day I was in one of these Horn of Africa countries, and I'm just taking photos around the town thinking this is Uganda, and I'm cold, and you know, these are war torn places where war, where they're armed to the teeth, and war, border wars, Somalia, Ethiopia, Eritrea, Djibouti, that area, where an air force base is an air force base, an airport is an airport. I mean, serious wars take place there. So, Trying to explain to people that you come from Uganda, didn't want spying, meant no um, uh, ill, just happened to be taking these pictures. To get police officers, security officers to understand you is where you appreciate Uganda. You know, in Uganda, you can, if you're a visitor, you can, if you're used to driving, let's say on the right, or you can make one of these mistakes in driving, a uh, traffic policeman stops you, grabs you, and asks you, why do you do ABCD? And then when you explain, they, on the spot, can, even without asking for a bribe, can kind of understand where you're coming from mm. and can make a judgment and say, Christo is clearly from Belgium and yes, used to the right, made a mistake and such. I can see, and just the way she's dressed, the way she expresses herself, she isn't, basically she means well. It's just an errand stool and then only mm. you can go. Mm -hmm. There are places where the law says you will not do ABC. Once the law says... And you find yourself in the high courts, you find yourself behind bars because of that infringement that clearly wasn't carelessness, wasn't malice, wasn't anything else. But because of these very rigid laws and the fear of authority, the traffic policeman hands it to his superior because if he lets you go, then the superior asks why he let you go. The superior fears to take a final decision. Oh, no, no, it goes. Mm. You can find yourself in your office of the Inspector General of Police over. A mild that's fine. People offense. would say that's a good thing, but then it's also a bad it, thing. Yeah? Yes, in a sense, yes. When you're a refugee, which explains now the other side, the people who love Uganda the most, these Congolese, Somalis, Ethiopians, Eritreans, our neighbors, South Sudanese, mm. this warm, flexible Uganda, that's a nuisance if you think about, let's say, respect of the law, rules, traffic rules, and so on now works for people like refugees. Yeah. I remember writing that in the, in the Monitor a few years ago. The, it's, it's one of those mixed uh, stories. Mm -hmm. When you're a refugee and there's war in your country and you run across the border without your passport, without any documents, you need a country like Uganda that can understand abnormality. They can understand what it means to run from Juba or Mogadishu and run into Uganda and you arrived like uh, barefooted. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you don't have uh, documents. But if you follow the news, I am with my children. Do you think I, I'm barefooted because I just came in for your mother? <laughs> now, Ugandans can understand that mm -hmm. stricter countries, let's say like Rwanda, Ethiopia, Eritrea, will not understand that, which is a problem if you're a refugee, but yes, is an advantage in terms of the basic traffic laws, mm -hmm. you know dispose of garbage and whatnot. So that's Uganda. It's a mixed story. Some of our weaknesses are best appreciated by refugees. Some of our weaknesses are an advantage, especially in crisis regions like Africa.